Hello everyone, I'm Alex Dykes, and today we're taking a look at the 2014 Toyota Sienna. This particular model is the Sienna Limited All-Wheel Drive model. Now, if it's not obvious by looking at me, I am a child of the 1970s. Admittedly, it was the late 70s, but as a result, I distinctly remember when my family first bought a minivan. It was 1988, and it was a Plymouth Grand Voyager LE in two-tone blue. As a result, like many of you watching, I do have a particular stigma in my head about minivans and about the people that tend to buy and drive minivans, but I'm going to try and put that to one side because there is no arguing the fact that minivans are incredibly practical. The Sienna style up front is very flowing, and it's core coordinated with the rest of the Toyota lineup in the United States. You can definitely see how this coordinates with something like a Toyota Venza or a Toyota Camry with these horizontal slats right here in the grille. Up front, it's easy to see how big minivans have become. This is a great deal larger than those first minivans that Chrysler debuted in the 1980s. Now this is the limited model, so we have HID headlamps up here. There are projector HID headlamps, and we have standard fog lamps right down here. We also have front parking sensors and rear parking sensors on our tester. The Sienna is big. It is just over 200 inches long putting this right in the thick of the minivan competition. It is a little bit shorter than something like a Dodge Grand Caravan or a Chrysler Town & Country, but we actually get a decent amount more interior room because if you see this side profile right up here, then you'll notice that the hood on the Sienna is relatively short when you compare it to the Chrysler minivans, and that really gives you a little bit more interior room than you find in the Chrysler twins. Although even minivans have been unable to avoid this progression towards a sloping rear hatch glass, we still get an awful lot more cargo practicality going on back here than you'll find in something like a Lexus RX350 or a Toyota Venza or anything in that two-row crossover segment because they tend to have a very sloping rear profile. Even the three-row crossovers like the Toyota Highlander or the Nissan Pathfinder have a fairly sloping rear glass and that really does cut down on cargo practicality. Of course, in my mind, the real key to minivan practicality is the sliding door. And of course, we have sliding doors on both sides of the Sienna like you find in most minivans out there. And that really gives you a much larger opening into the passenger area of the minivan, making ingress and egress an awful lot easier than in a three row crossover. A nice design touch on the Sienna is this fuel door right here and the interlock system with a sliding door. In case you're wondering, it's actually not possible to open this sliding door and hit the fuel door because the car actually has a lock mechanism that prevents this door from opening far enough to actually hit the fuel door unless the fuel door is closed and then we can actually fully open the door and the power mechanism on the door will operate. Now most of the minivans out there are relatively similar in dimension. So the Odyssey, the Chrysler minivans, as well as that new Kia Sedona are relatively similar in terms of length and overall width. This is a fairly wide vehicle, however. So if you're looking at something like a three row crossover vehicle and a minivan, the minivan is about three inches wider or so than your average three row crossover. That includes something like a Toyota Highlander or a Nissan Pathfinder or anything else in that three row segment. In terms of style, I think that this rear end is more attractive than you'll find in the other minivans out on the market, except for that brand new Kia. Admittedly, that's not a terribly high bar to pass because if you take a look at the Chrysler minivans, it's definitely function over form. There's a very vertical hatch in that Chrysler minivan and it's not terribly attractive in the back. In terms of exterior styling, I give the Sienna seven out of 10 points and I'm kind of including in this category the average three row crossover. So keep that in mind when I'm talking about the styling as well as other features in this minivan because I think that an awful lot of shoppers shopping for the Sienna are also cross-shopping three-row crossovers. At least that's what my research tells me. Admittedly, this design isn't as exciting as Toyota's own Highlander, but I still think it's relatively attractive as far as three-row vehicles go. Under the Sienna's hood, you will find the same 3.5-liter V6 engine as you'll find in a wide variety of Toyota products, including its direct competitor, the Highlander. This produces 266 horsepower and 245 pound-feet of torque, which is a slight reduction versus that Highlander. Like all the other minivans on the American market, except for that Nissan Quest, the V6 engine has made it exclusively to a six-speed automatic transmission, sending power to the front wheels by default. Very unlike the other minivans on the market, however, you can also get an available all-wheel drive system in the Sienna. It will set you back just over $2,400, and it uses a multi-plate clutch type setup to direct power to the rear wheels. The system is very, very closely related to what you'll find in the 2014 Toyota Highlander. Very much like that Highlander, this system can direct power to the rears when wheels slip, or it can also send them whenever it likes. So at full throttle acceleration, this vehicle will lock up that clutch pack and direct about half the power to the rear. Fuel economy on this all-wheel drive version is rated at 16 miles per gallon city, 23 highway with a combined rating of 19 miles per gallon. You do get slightly better mileage if you don't get the all-wheel drive system, of course. That's relatively similar to what you'll find in most three-row crossovers, as well as the rest of the minivan competition out there. Now, admittedly, the Nissan Quest and the Mazda 5 do get slightly better fuel economy, the Mazda 5 because it's smaller, and the Nissan Quest because it does use a CVT. Front seat comfort comes in at around 9 out of 10 points. We do have a multi-way power adjustable driver's seat in our particular model. 
The passenger seat doesn't have quite the same range of motion as the driver's seat. That is one thing to keep in mind. We have a two-way power adjustable lumbar support and a manual tilt telescoping steering column with a decent range of motion. Now certain models of the Town & Country and the Grand Caravan do have slightly more comfortable front seats. They offer a little bit more adjustability than you'll find in the Sienna. Rear seat comfort varies depending on which model of Sienna you get. Since we're in the model with the captain's chairs, we score 10 out of 10 points. These are absolutely the most comfortable seats you will find in any minivan sold in America. These seats do move forward and backward in the tracks. They move quite a large distance. As you can see, this is the farthest back and then this is uh, the farthest forward that they will latch, but they will scoot even further forward to help you gain access to the third row seats. Now, if we're in the all the way back position, you'll notice another interesting feature here. If we pull on this little lever, we do have a integrated ottoman that slides out. We have a reasonable amount of leg room back here. Now, with this seat all the way back in its tracks and that front seat adjusted for me at six feet tall, my shoes are touching that front seat back. Uh, but if you did push that front seat further forward, then you could fit a six foot five person in the back with their legs on the ottoman. Now, rather unfortunately, that six foot five person does have a little bit of trouble fitting in here in our sunroof equipped model. Now, we do have the dual sunroof, so we have a sunroof up front and we have a sunroof right back here for the second row, and that does really cut down on the headroom. I'm six feet tall and my hair is brushing the ceiling right back here in the second row. Now, if you don't get this rear sunroof in the uh, upscale model of the Sienna, then this isn't much of a problem, but it is a problem in our model right here. We also have a recline lever on these rear seat backs, but as you can see, they don't recline as far as the front seats. So this is as reclined as this second row will get. One thing to know is that these captain's chairs only flip forward about this much. So if you do need to carry longer cargo or larger cargo, then something like a Chrysler minivan is going to be a bit more convenient, especially for those spur of the moment shopping trips, because the center seats will just fold right into the floor like the rear seats do. In contrast with the Sienna, you'd actually have to remove these captain's chairs. As you can see right here, they actually do come out of their tracks. They're quite heavy, so I'm not really gonna do that right now, but you would have to remove it and then sort of store it in the back cargo area if you did need to put a longer item in the Sienna. It's just not quite as practical as those Chrysler minivans. Although these seats are much more comfortable, so there is a definite trade-off. Those flip and fold seats in the Chrysler minivans are not nearly as comfortable as these middle row seats in the Sienna. I rank them about as comfortable as the third row seats in the Sienna. In order to test out the third row in the Sienna, I'm first going to adjust this sliding second row seat over here on the right. Now this front seat is all the way back in its tracks. I had a six foot five passenger in there. So I'm gonna scoot this chair right up to the point where I have about an inch and a half of leg room. And now let's hop into this third row seat right back here. And as you can see, this is the big difference between a minivan and a three row crossover vehicle because I have about six inches of legroom left between the second row seat and the third row seat. In addition to being able to stretch my legs out like this, I also have a decent amount more thigh cushion than you'd find in a three row crossover. So the thigh cushions are longer, they're closer to your knees, and they're also higher off the floor, which makes these rear seats more comfortable for adults. The third row does recline as well. In this most upright position, my head is touching the ceiling, but I can lean this seat back to a point where my head isn't touching the ceiling anymore. And then you can recline it a little further back than that for a little bit more relaxing journey. When it comes to installing child seats, minivans are very practical as well. Both of these outboard second row seats do have standard latch anchors right here, whether you get the bench seat or these captain's chairs. If you do get the bench seat, then we get a third top tether anchor, but we don't get a third set of latch anchors right there in the middle. Instead, you will find the third set of latch anchors right back here in the third row bench seat because the 60-40 portion of this rear folding seat, the center seat, has latch anchors as well as a top tether anchor. An additional thing to note is that the outboard third row bench seats do not have top tether anchors, so the optimal places to install a child seat would be the middle of this third row bench and these captain's chairs right here. The first thing you'll notice back here is that this cargo load floor is about a foot lower than this rear bumper or the rear tailgate opening. And that's because we have an awful lot more storage room going on in this minivan than you might otherwise assume. In fact, we have more storage area back here than many three row crossovers with the third row folded. Now this deep well gives us additional cargo room, but it also allows this third row seat to fold completely into itself. So if we uh, pull this handle right here, if I get this right, there's that one first, and then there is that handle right here. You can see this seat goes all the way down into that well, and now the cargo load floor is level with the hatch area. Now Chrysler's minivans take this the next step further, and the second row in the minivan also folds completely flat into the floor, and you won't find that in the Toyota minivan. Of course, there is a trade-off because the rear seats in the Chrysler minivan 
aren't as comfortable as these captain's chairs, but they are definitely more practical. Overall, the Santa scores 10 out of 10 points in my exclusive trunk comfort index. There's an awful lot of room back here in this cargo area. We also have a nice 120 volt power outlet and a 12 volt power outlet in our limited model. That's very handy right there. You can easily access that from the third row if you're in the third row and you need to plug in your device. Now, if you're thinking to yourself that this mechanism for raising and lowering the third row seat doesn't look like the Sienna that you've seen on dealer lots, there's probably a reason for that. You're probably taking a look at the front wheel drive Sienna, and if you get the all wheel drive Sienna, we do lose the option for the power third row seat. So there is an option in the regular Sienna to have this mechanism powered, can't get that with all-wheel drive, unfortunately. The cargo space, the cargo practicality, and the all-wheel drive do come at a cost, and that cost is a spare tire in the Sienna all-wheel drive model. Instead, we have run-flat tires all the way around. Now, Toyota tells us that if one of these does get a flat, you can safely drive for about 100 miles at a maximum speed of 50 miles an hour so you can get back to a tire shop. But you should know that these tires are likely going to be shredded by the time you hit that 100 miles at 50 miles an hour. The reason for the spare tire deletion is that underneath this vehicle, of course, we have all-wheel drive, and that means that the all-wheel drive drive shaft has to run from the front of the car to the back of the car, and that really messes with the way that everything else under the car is arranged, and there's just no room for that spare tire anymore. In a normal front-wheel drive Sienna, the spare tire would be right under the load floor, immediately behind the front passenger seat. Let's start our interior walk around in the back. We do have storage compartments right here in the hard armrest for the third row. These are all hard plastics, so there are no soft-touch plastics right here for the third row passenger. Two large cup holders, and we have a standard sunshade in our limited model right there on the opening rear windows. Above the window, you'll find an air vent, an assist grab handle to help you get in and out of the seat, and we also have a map light right here. Third row passengers do have relatively easy access to the 120 volt and 12 volt power outlets that are right behind the seat back. So if I flip and fold this third row right back into place there, you'll actually see the power outlets right over there in the corner of the back of the Sienna. Second row captain's chairs have seat belts integrated right into the seat back. We have map lights in the second row, Again, another assist grab handle, and our model does have the standard sunshades that you'll find in the limited model. Second row armrests are height adjustable, so we press this little button, and then we have a ability to lock this armrest into various heights, right like that, and it will always return to that height. Our model has the enormous optional flip-down rear seat entertainment system. There's a remote control that controls that, and there are also wireless headphones. And then if we look back from that, you'll notice we have the button for our rear sunroof right there, and this does open fully. On the ceiling behind the driver, you will find the controls for the rear climate control zone. We do have a three-zone automatic system in our limited model. Because the second row slides forward and backward so far, you can actually slide these two cup holders right here in the center console forward and backward as well. And the design allows you to put bags right here in the center area, so that way they won't roll around on you. Moving to the front, we have height adjustable seatbelts for the driver and the front passenger, as well as two-way adjustable headrests. Leather seats are available in the XLE as well as the Limited model, but the Limited model gets this two-tone contrasting leather and vinyl. So the seat faces are leather and the seat sides are vinyl. Because of the era this vehicle was designed in, you will find a decent amount of hard plastics on the interior. We do have a soft-touch armrest right here for the driver and front passenger, that soft-touch as well. But this is all hard plastic in the door, hard plastics lower in the door as well. We have fake wood trim in our limited model, and the hard plastics continue all the way across the dashboard, even including this upper, darker portion of the dashboard, which you would normally find uh, cast in injection molded soft plastics in most Toyota products. In keeping with the minivan's cargo first mantra, we have two large glove boxes. We have an upper glove box right here, and then we have a lower glove box right down there as well. They're both very large. I was able to fit a tablet computer in this lower glove box but uh, your average iPad or 10 inch tablet is just a little bit too large for this upper compartment right here. High on the dashboard, we have this relatively small display and this is used for the external temperature, the clock, the climate control settings, as well as the trip computer. Below that, we have the optional JBL audio and navigation system. If you wanna know more about the infotainment options, then go ahead and click that banner at the bottom of your screen. That will take you on over to the review of this particular head unit, which is the optional JBL head unit. If you wanna know more about the Entune system, which is the optional system in the XLE models and below, then you can also go ahead and click on over to that one at the end of this video. There quite different. This is basically Toyota's older navigation and infotainment system, and the Entune system that's available is their newer system. So if you upgrade to the JBL system, you do not have the ability to voice command your iPhone or your iPod or your USB media device like you can in the lower end Entune system, but you do get these snazzier JBL speakers. Over here we have the start stop button for our keyless go equip model. We have the shifter for our standard six speed automatic. We do have a sport mode with a semi manual mode right there. It's not a true manual mode, it's just sort of a sport mode that limits the upper gear range. Over here we have our controls for our three zone 
automatic climate control system. This controls the driver's zone, this is the rear zone, and this is the passenger button, and then we hit the sync button right over here to sync all the zones together. Below that you'll find the info, select, reset, and setup buttons. These control the trip computer that uses that very small display up above the radio. Below the trip computer controls we have our heated seat controls for the driver and the front passenger seats, 12 volt power outlet, this is the DVD player for the rear entertainment system. And then here we have the first of a bunch of cup holders in the Sienna. This vehicle has 10 true cup holders like that. So we have two here. Then we have two right below it in the center console. As you can see right there, I have a wallet and some other junk stuffed in that one. And then we have six cup holders total in the rear. That's in addition to the plethora of bottle and juice box holders that you find in this minivan. Now between the array of cup holders, if we go down the dashboard, this is where you'll find your auxiliary input as well as USB input, another 12 volt power outlet, and then we have a large area there where you can put purses or other bags between the front seats. Now we're looking behind those cup holders. Those are those two cup holders up there. And this is the back of the center console right down there. And we have a storage compartment, very large and very deep. So you can see I have glasses, I have a accelerometer, I have some headphones, I have the remote for the rear seat entertainment system. It's a very deep, very large compartment and it goes all the way in front of these cup holders as well. Over on the driver's side, you'll find this four dial instrument cluster. We have our tachometer right over here on the left hand side, fuel and temperature gauges right over here on the right. Very large central speedometer. It's actually slightly offset to the right there. We have this metal effect plastic trim going right around here to our odometer as well as the drive gauge. This does not contain the trip computer. It is again in that small display right there in the center console. Overall, I think this has kind of a Star Trek theme, which I find strangely attractive being a child of the 70s. Moving out, we have this attractive fake wood and leather steering wheel. We have fake wood on the bottom and on the top. Volume controls right over here, track forward, backward, mode button right there hang up pickup button for the phone system, voice command button, and you'll find your cruise control on the little stock right over there. To the right of the driver, we have our mirror controls with power folding mirrors in our limited model, powered rear vents. We pull to close them and then we push to open them. Right over here, we have our stability and traction control button. We have our parking sensors front and rear on our limited model, blind spot information system, and we have height adjustable headlamps in our HID equipped model. Below that, you'll find an additional storage compartment that holds little coins and other knickknacks right there. Moving over to the button bank in the ceiling, we have our light controls. These are for map lights, dome lights right there. We have a sunglass compartment right in there, and we can move that to a mirror position so that we can see what's going on in the rear seats. We have our dome light buttons right there, power door and power tailgate buttons right across here. So power door for the left, power door for the right, and then we have our power rear hatch right there. These buttons control the sunroofs. So this is for the sun, front sunroof, this is for the rear sunroof, and this is the disabled button so the rear passengers can't play with the rear sunroof. Right over here you'll find the SOS Safety Connect button, and this is basically Toyota's version of OnStar. It gives you telematic emergency services, so if you're in an accident and your airbags deploy, they can help find you. If you need medical assistance, that sort of thing, you just press that little button and you'll be connected to the Toyota Safety Connect system. When I went and visited my local Toyota dealer, they did not have any all-wheel drive versions of this car to test. And I do think it's important that you test drive the all-wheel drive version if you are considering buying one because it does drive a little bit differently than the front-wheel drive version of this same minivan. And the reason for that is both the all-wheel drive system as well as the run-flat tires. Because of course with the all-wheel drive system we don't have torque steer or any of those other front-wheel drive driving dynamics that you get in the regular old Sienna, the front-wheel drive model. And with these run-flat tires, you do get a firmer and stiffer ride. It does actually improve the handling as well, but it does result in a slight toll on the ride in this car. And one thing you should know about these run-flat tires is that although Toyota does say that you can drive about 100 miles on the run-flat safely, that doesn't mean that the tire is going to be repairable after that 100 miles is over. So by the time you get to the tire shop, you will more than likely have to buy a new tire. In addition to that, run-flats are also more expensive than a conventional tire, so you do need to keep those sorts of things in mind if you are looking at the all-wheel drive version of the Sienna. The Sienna weighs about 150 to 200 pounds more than a Toyota Highlander and about 200 pounds less than a Chrysler minivan. As a result, acceleration is fairly brisk even though this doesn't have quite as much power as that Chrysler minivan does. I scored 0-60 to 60 in 7 seconds, which is pretty good for a minivan, pretty good for your average mid-sized crossover as well. In fact, the Highlander only scores about two one hundredths of a second faster than this vehicle, which is really nothing when you actually average out those times and you adjust for different road conditions, etc. This is pretty average for your mid-sized crossover segment, so I give it about 8 out of 10 points overall. Logically, with a curb weight that's relatively similar to the rest of the minivan competition, as well as most three-row crossovers, 
The Sienna handles very much like your average three row crossover. This doesn't handle like a 1980s minivan. It's not boaty or floaty, it's not wallowy, etc. It really does handle like your average three row crossover. So I give this about seven out of 10 points overall. Obviously the Sienna is not going to be as dynamic as a sportier oriented crossover, something like an Acura MDX, but versus your average run of the mill crossover, a Pathfinder, a Highlander, etc., this holds its own. Minivans are designed to carry a lot of people and a lot of cargo. Braking does take a little bit of a hit as a result. I give this six out of 10 points overall. There was a little bit of fade in my braking fade tests. The distances are relatively respectable for a minivan. Now, one thing to note is that the Highlander did perform just a little bit better in that test. It does seem to have uh, perhaps a slightly more aggressive brake compound in its brakes, perhaps a little bit more fade resistance there. Any way you slice it, it just performed a little bit better than the Sienna. When you compare this to the other minivans in this segment, it's relatively similar to the Chrysler minivans as well as the Honda Odyssey. It's a little bit better than the Nissan Quest, but not quite as good as that Mazda 5. Of course, the Mazda 5 is very small compared to this, so it should handle and brake better than this. This vehicle has a very composed and very comfortable ride. I give it 9 out of 10 points in the front wheel drive form. In the all wheel drive form like this, you do give up a little bit for those run flat tires, and I give it about 8 out of 10 points overall. In terms of cabin noise, this vehicle scores 9 out of 10 points. I measured 69 decibels at 50 miles an hour in this cabin up front. It is a little bit louder in the back, so it really does vary where you sit in the Sienna, but overall this is very, very quiet. It actually is just about as quiet as a number of luxury car entries as well, so minivans have definitely come a long way since the 1980s. Unfortunately, anytime you're trying to push a big brick like this through the air, your fuel economy is going to suffer, especially if you add all-wheel drive on top of it. Fuel economy came in at around 19.8 miles per gallon and about 650 miles of very mixed driving in the Sienna. Overall, I give that six out of 10 points. You will find better fuel economy in the other minivan entries in this segment. However, the Sienna is the only one with all-wheel drive, so that's not necessarily the most fair comparison. The front-wheel drive version of the Sienna will give you one to two miles per gallon better fuel economy, but even so, it's not exactly stellar in this segment. Rather unfortunately, I'm told the Toyota has never considered putting a hybrid drivetrain in the Sienna, and I think that's relatively unfortunate because I think it would help differentiate this a little bit more uh, from the Chrysler and the Honda competition. Even though the Sienna's all-wheel drive system is very similar to what you find inside the Highlander and Toyota's other crossover products, we don't have a lock button for the center clutch in this car, so you can't lock it like you can in the Highlander or in the RAV4 or certain other vehicles. And that does mean this is a little bit less useful in certain situations than the Highlander, but in general, it behaves very much the same. This active all-wheel drive system is always sending at least a little bit of power to the rear, and it will direct up to 50% of the power to the rear whenever it's required. Although there are some very limited circumstances where this style of all-wheel drive system can send more than 50% of the power to the rear, you need to know that they're relatively limited. Overall, the traction control system and the stability control system and the all-wheel drive system work very well together to help keep this car feeling very sure-footed on or off the pavement. So if you're buying something with all-wheel drive because you occasionally go camping down a gravel road and you're worried about it getting muddy in the rain, or you're going to a ski resort and you're worried about getting stuck or you don't want to deal with chains on your way to the ski resort, it's definitely a valid reason to get an all-wheel drive system in my book, uh, then this is going to perform exactly the same as the average three-row crossover. There's really not going to be that much difference. You won't have to chain up in this as long as you have mud and snow tires. And honestly, if you're going to go into anything uh, you know, severe enough to get your Sienna stuck in it, then your Pathfinder, your Ford Explorer, your Nissan, uh, whatever, your Toyota Highlander, they're all going to get stuck right along with you. There's not really going to be that many situations where the extra three inches of ground clearance in a Highlander are going to give you that much benefit in a crossover vehicle with this kind of all-wheel drive system. Overall, I must admit that the Sienna really impressed me out on the road. I hadn't expected something quite this dynamic out of a minivan. Now, don't get me wrong, this isn't going to handle like a Honda Accord or Toyota Camry or anything like your average mid sized family sedan. However, this does handle relatively well for itself, all things considered. It's very similar to your average three row crossover or even those large two row crossovers that are out there on the market like the Ford Edge and even the Toyota Venza. What that really means to the average three row crossover shopper is that you can get something like this that has a greatly increased cargo capacity, greatly increased cargo practicality, and solidly increased comfort for the rear passengers versus your average three row crossover without giving up anything in terms of driving dynamics. Now, giving up something in terms of style, that's a different question. The Sienna is not the least expensive minivan for 2014. Pricing starts at $26,920 for the L model. The LE model, which adds the display, audio, the backup camera, power doors, and the three-zone climate control, 
will set you back $31,570. That's a decent amount more expensive than base and similarly configured Chrysler minivans. The Grand Caravan starts at $20,595 for its admittedly stripped down version, but you still do get that V6 in the Chrysler minivan. If you check all the option boxes like the ones that are checked on this particular model here, you end up at $47,960. And this is again for the limited all-wheel drive model. Personally, I think my optimum configuration is $39,288 for the XLE model with all-wheel drive that has leather and the Entune system with apps. I really didn't care for this JBL sound system's interface, and that's actually the head unit that's in the dashboard. It does sound very good, but I really didn't like the way this particular system worked. I do think that the Entune system is a better system, even if it doesn't sound quite as nice. The Limited model has a slightly dressier interior, but overall I think the XLE's interior is just fine for me, and I really don't need that rear seat entertainment system, but that's just a personal preference. If you're shopping around, you should know that the Sienna ends up a little bit on the expensive side compared to the other minivan options out there. Honda's Odyssey starts at $28,825, which is a little bit more than a base Sienna, but once you adjust for standard features, they end up right about the same. Toyota's own Highlander starts a little bit more expensive than the base model at $29,215, and for that you only get the four-cylinder engine and front-wheel drive in that model. Now the Sienna and that base Highlander will both carry eight passengers, and so the Sienna is a relatively good deal when you compare it to that Highlander in base form. Once you work your way on up to the Limited model or the XLE model, the difference ends up being quite a bit smaller, however, although the Highlander doesn't deliver the same practicality that you can get in this Sienna. Overall, the Sienna will give you an awful lot more rear passenger comfort and an awful lot more rear cargo room than that Highlander. Really, the only area where the Highlander excels over the Sienna is simply in towing capacity. It does have a 5,000 pound towing capacity versus the about 3,000 pounds or so that you can tow in this Sienna. When it comes to pricing, we have to talk about the 30,000 pound Gorilla, which is Chrysler. It's really two 30,000 pound Gorillas because Chrysler sells the town and country as well as the Grand Caravan in the United States. And put together, they sell twice as many minivans as the Sienna or as the Honda Odyssey. So whereas the Sienna sells relatively well when you compare it to just the Grand Caravan or just the town and country, when you put the two of those minivans from Chrysler together, they are definitely the dominant factor in this segment. Price is a big part of why Chrysler is so dominant in the minivan segment. If you compare a similarly equipped version of this Sienna or a Honda Odyssey to the town and country or the Grand Caravan, these will end up several thousand dollars more expensive than either of those Chrysler options. If you're just looking at basic transportation, then that base model of the Grand Caravan is extraordinarily attractive because it's nearly $6,000 less expensive than the cheapest Sienna. Now the Chrysler is just about as comfortable up front. It does have some added practicality features that you can't get in the Highlander, like the stow and go second row seats. The Grand Caravan and the Town & Country do have second row seats that fold completely into the floor, and then you can also use that floor storage compartment when the seats are unfolded and in position like they are right here. In addition, the Sienna's interior is full of hard plastics, as I noted earlier, and you will find an awful lot more soft plastics in the rest of the competition. Hard plastics aside, the Sienna really scores highly when it comes to comfort, especially second row comfort right here. These are easily the most comfortable second row seats I have ever sat in, and that includes an awful lot of those three row competitors out there. You won't find a three row competitor like a Highlander with built-in Ottomans like you'll find in the Highlander, and these are really quite comfortable. I'm not sure why I would buy my kid Ottomans in the back, but they're really comfortable. Of course, in addition to rear seat comfort, Toyota's classic values of dependability and reliability are big reasons to buy the Sienna over the rest of the competition. One of the most frequent questions I get from viewers is, what is the most comfortable third row in any crossover that you've ever sat in? And the answer really is this Toyota Sienna. A minivan has an awful lot more room to work with than your average three row crossover, so any minivan is going to have a more comfortable third row than your average three row crossover. And that even includes luxury brands like Volvo, BMW, Mercedes, etc. The third row in any of those vehicles is going to be an awful lot more cramped than anything in the minivan category. Keeping in mind that the Sienna is the only minivan available with all-wheel drive, I would say this is also the only minivan that can be directly compared to your average three row all-wheel drive crossover. And indeed, because this uses basically the same all-wheel drive system as Toyota's own Highlander, I think I would recommend this to the average shopper that planned to use their third row on a regular basis over the Highlander. Now, if you're looking for something that's a little bit more rugged, that would definitely be the Highlander. It does have slightly more ground clearance than the Sienna. And if you're only looking at that third row bench seat as an emergency bench seat, so you're only gonna use it to toss people back there occasionally, then it might be okay. But if you actually plan on having people regularly sitting back there, if you have that many kids, or if you have that many people in your family that regularly travel with you in your car, 
then a Sienna is going to beat it any day. To be honest, if it were my money on the line, however, I would probably buy the Chrysler Town & Country, and the reason is entirely in the folding second row. That second row folds flat, and it also folds completely into the floor. Neither of those things happen with these captain's chairs in the Limited model. That really makes the Town & Country a decent amount more practical than the Sienna, especially if, like me, you frequently end up visiting the home improvement store on your way home, and sometimes you may need to jam a random ladder in your car, something like that. With this, you'd have to plan ahead a little bit, or you'd have to move that seat out of the way and try and store it behind that seat in the third row area. But with the Chrysler minivan, you just fold it into the floor and off you go. As always, which vehicle works best for you really depends on your needs, however. So do let me know in the comment section down below which vehicle you prefer. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. Again, I'm Alex Dykes, and this has been the 2014 Toyota Sienna Limited All-Wheel Drive. Go ahead and click that subscribe banner at the bottom of your screen so you can be updated on all of my latest videos. Go ahead and find me over at facebook.com slash alexandautos, and you can always send your questions to alex at alexandautos.com. I'll see you next week. Thank you.